Welcome, young scientists. Can you help me with the hypothesis that I have? I'm trying to look at the seasons and trying to figure out why it's hotter in the summer and not in the winter. So here is the sun and how the Earth is tilted at a 23 and a half degree angle to towards the sun. So it's summer in the northern hemisphere here, and then this would be fall. This would be winter, and look at the angle that the light comes and hits the ground during the winter. And then this is uh, spring, and back to summer because the light is coming straight down. I guess this means that it is uh, has more energy and it's stronger, and the the it's more hotter during the summer. I guess so. This. Probably looks like this if we were to take it mathematically and show that as the light is spread over a larger area, it should be more dim or less hot, right? So let's look at it with a flashlight. And as we increase the angle that the light comes in, the light should probably be dimmer. At least that's what I'm thinking. So maybe you can help me support this hypothesis. So this was the question that I had. How does the angle of Earth's axial tilt affect how much area the sun's energy is spread? With that, I think I explained my hypothesis. If I shine a light on a surface of different angles, then the largest angle will spread light over the greatest area. Hmm. Let's see if we can support that hypothesis. So for this experiment, I'm going to have to do the following things. Well, I need a protractor for um, figuring out angles and I printed it out here on a piece of paper. Now, if you don't have a printer, you can always put it on a device like an iPad or a Chromebook and then just stand your Chromebook up the way I'm going to stand it up here. So, there are three different angles that I can test to see and I chose the 90 degrees, 10 and 110. Well, this represents a 0 degree axial tilt, a 10 degree axial tilt, and a 20 degree axial tilt. Here is how the math works out. So a 0 degree axial tilt would have the protractor reading at 90. So I mark those on my protractor with my red pen. And then I need to stand my protractor up. So I put it on this cardboard box and place the cardboard box behind my laptop. Now, you can get creative. You can tape it to a book and lean your lab notebook against the stack of books. As long as you have it set up where you can keep that book for an extended period of time at that angle. And you can change the angle. For me, I changed it to 90 and then 100. Look at the protractor reading. And now I tilted it to 110. So make sure you can have those three different angles when you set up your experiment. You might have to try with different materials and try multiple different methods. Now what should I do? Well, I was able to find a good light and put the angle of my light uh, on top of the book. So I stacked a uh, board game box underneath that light just so that the light stays in one place the whole time and then before I recorded any data I'm gonna make sure that I can easily see a circle of light around my uh, graph paper in my lab notebook at 0 degrees and then 10 degrees and then 20 degrees and I made sure that you can see that full circle of light on the graph paper uh, without falling off the edges Alright, so once I did that, then I was able to start my experiment. Alright, so the first step I did was make a um, outline of the light. You know, it's kind of difficult to take that pen and make a nice circle. So I just made some dots around the circle and then took my notebook off of the laptop and then uh, was able to fill in the rest of the circle. And then it would look like this, uh, just verifying that I can make a nice circumference around the size of the light that's hitting the graph paper. All right. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and uh, find out how many squares that that circle uh, took up. Okay. 
and then you know continuing to count the squares I was able to keep track of the squares by uh, putting dots in them and I only put dots in the full squares uh, later on I would go ahead and go back and do the fractions of squares and add that, those up later for example these two that I highlighted in green add up to one because they're roughly a half each now you don't have to be perfect but after you total all of them up then you'll get a certain number and keep track of that number right here in, on each page I was able to make a summary axial tilt is zero and then the trials we had one trial this because uh, I want to have a total of three trials later and then I counted however many squares and put that number there okay then I was able to make a table go ahead and make the table and do that and fill in that table there so I have the axial tilt in degrees I have three trials and my average number of squares and and then I should be able to calculate that in square inches so here I have 0 10 and 20 degree axial tilt okay after I do the 0 degree tilt three times then I will be able to find an average by adding the three up and dividing by three then I will get an area in square inches these lab notebooks if you double check the front cover says four squares per inch so the area would be the average divided by four so for example I was able to get some trials I did it three times with the same tilt of zero degrees but these three I added them together divided I got 59.3333 but I rounded it to just 59.3 and then uh, my area would be that number divided by four because there are four of these squares equals one square inch so 14.8 and that's great so that would be four zero degrees and then I'm gonna do that three more times for 10 degrees and three more times for 20 degrees by the end of this experiment you should have nine different pages of uh, square of uh, circles that you counted up just like this so uh, it may take a while so allow yourself enough time to do this okay and you're gonna be able to count all of those up accurately and then we will have this table here now when you have this table you can maybe if my hypothesis was correct this number here uh, show with the axial tilt of 20 degrees would be greater than this number here 14.8 uh, I'm gonna let you guys decide and I really need your guys help to decide if my hypothesis can be supported or refuted again here's the hypothesis if I shine a light on a surface of different angles then the largest angle will spread light over the greatest area this will help me answer the question how does the angle of the Earth's axial tilt affect over how much area the Sun's energy is spread let's look at that again and area of light is spread over a longer uh, area and then maybe that rays is not as hot, hot and maybe that is actually the reasons for the seasons all right have fun exploring and go ahead and perform this experiment